I've prepared a live webinar planning checklist for you and I am going to include this as a uh, downloadable PDF as well as a Word document. Um, I, you know, sometimes I get a little bit uh, frustrated when I down, have to download PDF documents and their checklists and things like, where they're fill in the blanks because uh, unless it's a fillable uh, PDF, you know, something where you can write on it, it, it's kind of a pain in the neck. So I will include both of those formats for you. So let's take a look and see what some of the stuff uh, that I want you to think about. Um, number one is uh, is to select the webinar topic. And again, pick the topic uh, that you're going to be discussing in your webinar, and then write a headline. Make the headline, uh, you know, snappy, hooky, something that is engaging, something that is benefits uh, written, uh, driven, and uh, is something that uh, that is really, really going to make somebody want to attend your webinar. Um, try to keep the webinar less than 140 characters. That is about the same length as a Twitter post, the maximum Twitter post. And that is a pretty good rule of thumb for writing a headline uh, that you can work with. Um, write a description about the headline. Um, I'm sorry, about the webinar. Uh, write a description here. Uh, the date that you're going to have the webinar. Uh, the time of day that the webinar will, um, will take place. Uh, make a note if this is going to be a recurring webinar. Uh, that may be a webinar that is part of a series or something that will be done in an encore presentation. So if you're going to be presenting it uh, in, in any sort of format, you know, make a note about that for yourself because there are certain things that you can keep in mind when you're setting it up. You know, if you're doing a series, uh, you know, some of the same stuff you're doing doesn't have to be entered all over and over again. So that, that's good to know. Uh, who is the organizer of the event? The organizer is the person with the top level of administrative control. Uh, and the organizer of the event is the person who has the, uh, uh, the, uh, the authority to assign other permissions as well. Uh, for instance, there are presenters. Uh, in many cases, the organizer of the event will be the presenter or the main presenter of the event, but not always. So if the organizer is not going to be the presenter, then the organizer needs to assign whatever permissions are necessary for the presenter or the presenters uh, to be able to share the control of the webinar, to be able to show their screens, to be able to show whatever applications they have, uh, whether they're showing presentations or, or working online or managing chat or whatever. So you put their names here, whatever notes you want. Uh, you may also have panelists. Um, panelists typically are not presenters, um, and I'll tell you how panelists work and, and how I like to work with panelists is that uh, sometimes I will have a number of people attending a webinar uh, who would like to uh, have some input, who may have some special questions. And there are times when I've had you know very, very large webinars with hundreds and hundreds of people, um, but there are just a few people that I will single out for the uh, for the ability to ask me a question uh, by phone or 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 to be uh, able to enter into a conversation in the webinar with their microphone, uh, and those I call panelists. Those are typically people that I will select from my No Blogger Left Behind group, um, and of course, people who have been through No Blogger Left Behind who are attending a blogging webinar are people who I think are special, and and those are people that I'm happy to accommodate. And to be, you know, to be able to go deeper with them in their uh, in their journey on in the blogs. Uh, next step is to set up a registration page, uh, and then set up a registration and a lead bridge. And what the lead bridge is is the lead bridge is a is a piece of software or a tool uh, in WordPress. There is a plugin that lets you connect the registration uh, with your autoresponder and your list building uh, vehicle. Uh, for instance, if you're setting up a registration on GoToWebinar, GoToWebinar doesn't collect those in your autoresponder, but you can work with a lead bridge uh, to, to do that. And there will be a separate web, uh, sep I'm sorry, a separate video uh, just about the, the lead bridge. I think it's very, very important to be able to collect the leads who come in and, and the registrants from the registration pr page and to be able to assign them to a campaign um, in, in your autoresponder service. Uh, you also want to 
very, very possibly create a registration survey, perhaps get some thoughts from your uh, folks before the webinar, something that is relevant to the topic, uh, perhaps ask them questions you, they would like to have answered. Uh, you know, what are their most burning questions about that topic? You know, what is it they would like to hear about? And that's very good information to have when you're setting up a webinar because you'll, you, know what, what, you know what people really want to know uh, and you can better meet those needs with, with the survey beforehand. Uh, you want to definitely set up some webinar alerts, email alerts. Uh, when people sign up for the webinar, you want them to get an email that says, you know, welcome to the webinar, it will be on such and such a date and time. You want them to get another uh, alert probably a week before, uh, the day before, and, uh, and an hour before. So there are a number of alerts. We have, uh, again, we have another video about that, but uh, I'm putting that on this checklist. Um, if you have the ability to collect SMS uh, uh, and, and or cell phone numbers, you can set, send people an SMS text alert prior to the webinar, and that's a really good thing to do, and that is something that really works very, very well to increase attendance. You may also, depending upon your situation, want to send them an alert via their voicemail to their cell phone. So you can actually send a message, if you have their telephone number, you can send a voicemail message to them that says, uh, you know, hi, this is Fran, listen, the webinar is gonna be starting in about 15 minutes. You know, get to your computer, check your email, um, I can create that kind of a voicemail message in a pre-recorded format, and uh, and that can go out as an alert as well. Uh, you want to you know make sure somebody is creating in the presentation, make sure that's covered. Uh, create whatever handouts you may be including with your presentation, any uh, any of the materials. You may want to, uh, for instance, you may want to create a a PDF form of, of a PowerPoint presentation uh, and, and perhaps some notes and make that available as a handout. You may have a white paper to share. You may have something to share. And again, that, that could, that's part of your uh, planning. Uh, you may also want to create a bonus and, and bonuses are, are, are a neat thing to do. And bonuses can be used actually to help people get viral for you. So after somebody registers, for instance, you could say, you know what? Uh, pick up a free bonus, you know, just please uh, send this uh, link to, to the webinar to, let's say, three of your friends or four of your friends, or post a, a tweet on Twitter to tell people about it, or, you know, or, or post a link to your Facebook page. Uh, there is some special software, it's called Refer a Friend Software, that lets you tie in uh, a, registrant's, uh, a, a, registra a, a, a webinar registration to a bonus and, uh, and connect it with that kind of incentive. That's kind of neat, that's a, that's a uh, neat uh, program that I use with one, of the web, with one of the Evergreen webinar programs I have. Uh, you also want to create some poll questions. Um, polls are a real great way to engage with your, uh, with your audience and, and, the, and you can create those ahead of time. Um, I'm guessing you probably want to do those at about 15 minute intervals. Uh, you know, make people click on a link, you know, vote about so something, uh, tell them, tell you how uh, experienced they are with a particular topic that you're discussing, you know, talk about, uh, you know, sales volume, whatever. Uh, one of the neat things about poll questions um, and about the survey um, is that this is uh, stuff that people will be doing online. This is interaction they will be doing. And at the end of the day, when you collect your registration information, and tracking and see who attended, uh, you will also see how they answered those poll questions and it will give you a much deeper insight into your audience and actually into the people who attended uh, as individuals. Uh, you want to definitely you know, talk about your team, talk to your team or consider if you're doing it yourself, if you are your team, uh, your question management uh, and uh, how you're gonna manage questions and, and your engagement strategy. Um, if you're a one person, you know, one arm paper hanger and you're the one who's organizing the webinar, doing the webinar yourself, there's a limit to how much you can really monitor uh, questions and engagement and, and still, you know, stay on target and, 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 and deliver your best kind of presentation. So you may want to uh, say, you know, I'll be taking questions after the webinar is over, after the webinar is complete, you know, I'll be reviewing the questions then. So please make sure that your questions are 
you know, are, are written in full sentences and I can understand them. Um, and, and again, consider the type of, me of ways that you will entertain questions. If you're going to just take the questions, you know, if you're going to be looking at the chat, if you're going to open up the phone lines, if, if people are on their microphones, if you're going to let them do that, or in fact, if you're going to be entertaining questions by email. Uh, it's really, really nice to be able to be working with another person, to have a, a, a partner on a webinar who can handle those types of things for you. Um, it's a real great strategy to have somebody on the chat, on the questions during a live webinar who can be answering them in real time while you are presenting. So it's, you know, it's a great, great, great uh, idea to have a couple of people working on a live webinar. Uh, you also want to take a look at your public relations, your advertising strategy. Where are you going to be uh, uh, looking for registrations? Uh, you, you'll have an email list. You have uh, you know, all kinds of, of facilities. You have the Facebook. You have uh, Twitter. You have all kinds of things. By and large, the, your email list is going to be the best. Uh, you may also want to consider advertising on Facebook and, and elsewhere, depending upon you know, what you're doing with, uh, with those webinars. Um, schedule a practice session. Uh, you know, I'm going to add something here I, that I did not put in. I'm going to add a, I'm going to insert a robe down here and also talk about recording plan. Um, recording plans, let's say that. You know, most of the uh, uh, platforms have a way to record those webinars. Some of those uh, platforms like WebEx and some others uh, will actually host the the webinar and the recording on their servers for you. Um, in many cases, you can also download them to your machine. You can also use a third party uh, tool to uh, to record something like Camtasia um, on on a PC or ScreenFlow. So you may be able to record, uh, you know, in a couple of different ways. And I think that having a plan A and a plan B is always a very, very good idea because webinar technology and webinar recording technology is not perfect. It's, it's definitely not a perfect uh, a situation. So having, having a plan B is great. Um, I don't, I think I said this, I'm not sure if I said this, but yeah, it's a really good idea to schedule a practice session. If you haven't done a webinar yet, then schedule several practice sessions and take it you know, from start to finish all the way through and go through all of these operations and make sure you've got them all done. Uh, make, make sure that you have a handle on them, that you're comfortable with them before you go live with, with a real webinar. Uh, you know, what kind of tools are you going to use to evaluate uh, your performance? Are you, know, are you going to ask people to do a follow-up survey? Um, are you going to make some telephone calls? Are you going to um, have a debrief with some people afterwards? I think a real, a, it's a really good idea to have someone you like and trust very, very much to listen. Uh, that might, might be somebody who's, who's a, you know, a part of your, your, uh, your audience and say, you know, how did I do? You know, give me your honest feedback. Uh, you know, tell me what I did well and tell me what I didn't do well. And, uh, and that's always a very, very good thing to do. Again, you want to track, you want, you want to see how many people registered and how many actually showed up. You know, with the, uh, the, among the people who showed up, how long did they stay and how engaged were they? Uh, there are different tools on different platforms that can actually help you measure engagement. You know, you can actually see with some platforms whether people are multitasking and doing something else besides just listening to you. Um, and then what kind of follow-up are you going to have? Again, this goes back to the, uh, to the email follow-up. Um, and then you want to be able to follow up, the, you know, ideally uh, have different messaging for different people. If you have somebody who registered and didn't show up, you don't want to send them the same message as somebody who registered and did show up and attended. So you want to have separ separate email strategies for the people who didn't show up, the per people who did show up uh, and stayed, and also for the people who did show up but who left early. Uh, and then there's a room, some extra room here for additional notes. Uh, you know, right again, right below the video, you can collect these, uh, these documents and, and that will help you get started.